Hi, it's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper Sheet Metal in Charlton, Massachusetts. And tonight's video will be on the tipping wheel. I have a couple of them. I've had uh, different uh, iterations of them. I've had this one for probably 15 years, eh, 12 years or so now. And I use this quite often for tipping edges and stuff. And I'm going to show you how this works. But before I show you that, I will show you my other tipping wheel. And uh, that's a work in progress. Both of these are works in progress, but they both work really good and there's a lot of potential to make them even better. Uh, here's my second tipping wheel, which I use for different special operations, and I'll show you later on in the video. This one's a little more rugged, and as you use tools, whether it be a tipping wheel, English wheel, or whatever, you always find shortcomings on the tool. And so a tool shouldn't be a, a, a finished product. It's always a work in progress, and that's the case in this one, and I intend to make it better even. Okay, before we talk about the tipping wheels, I want to talk a little bit about uh, prepping the metal before putting it in the tipping wheel. Uh, the tipping wheel essentially will tip an edge up, and there's a bunch of different ways to tip an edge up. There's a bu bunch of different ways to cut your panel and stuff. I want to go over that a little bit before we start actually using the tipping wheel. So. I've pre-cut out a few of these. These were just free-form cuttings uh, with a little radius on it. This one has uh, some tighter radiuses, a, uh, a con uh, cave radius and convex radiuses. So what I want to show you is a proper way to cut sheet metal. Now this is a piece of, uh, I think this is 040 aluminum, probably 3003. Okay, so I want to put a radius right here. And uh, the radius can be dictated by the buck or by a plan or whatever. But let's say I'm preforming a radius right here. Uh, it's very difficult to take a pen and just run a nice radius and get it perfect right the first time. So what I like to do is use this vinyl 1 8 inch uh, striping tape. And you can use this it's fine line vinyl tape. You can use this to lay out beautiful lines so that's a nice clean line right there now if I was going to say tip an edge and the edge is going to be a 5 8 flan 5 8 uh, wide flange right here but this is all extra material I'm going to cut off so this is all going here so normally what I would do on something like this is I would use hand shears and I used the hand shears for years and years and years and I would do sometimes a preliminary cut like this because the smaller amount of material you get here the better the, the shears will actually work. So the, the Carl who was telling me about this told me that you could actually cut right on the line. They got nice carbide for uh, edge blades that you can turn and uh, they'll, this thing will last quite a long time. It comes with two batteries, the same with the Bosch too. So the, the, uh, the deal with this is if you get the light just right, you can You can run it pretty good on the line. Now you see there, I've, I, I've erred on the side of being wide of my uh, tape line. And so what I do there is I'll take a little three inch grinder. I use the Norton Blaze 50s with a little air grinder and I'd air grind that to perfection. So all my lines are, are really good. Now sometimes this will leave a little burr. Uh, that, it's not bad at all on this one. So that's how I do all my cuts now, all with the, with the cordless shears. I hardly use the, the regular sh snips anymore at all. Now, as far as tipping an edge, there's a whole bunch of different ways to, to do it, and I wanted to show you uh, some of the methods. And uh, one of the simplest methods is just to take a pair of vice grips like this, and you can weld on some little tabs on it like this and again you want a line so we're gonna we're gonna eyeball this line here and give ourselves a a nice 5 8 or so margin here so we're gonna tip this up 90 degrees with the pliers now we might not do the whole thing but I just want to show you the process now the nice thing about the vice grips is you can squeeze with them good and clamp 
and you can do that you have to do this incrementally a little at a time If you try to go up too much, you'll get a, uh, a, a strong radius, and, you, and usually on a tip, you want a pretty nice, sharp radius here. Now this will leave where it bites; it'll leave little, little bite marks, but they'll all come out. So this is an effective way to do it. And uh, back at my grandfather's restoration shop back in the 60s and 70s, when I worked there. Um, he wasn't too keen on buying a lot of tools, so this is how we had to do a flange. Very simple method. Now, once you get it to this angle, then you can take a, a dolly and finish it off with the dolly. Now I have this dolly. I made this dolly up. I don't know if anybody makes anything like this. I made this especially for uh, tipping edges. And uh, typically I would have that blue tape on the other side. I, right now I've got it on the inside and it's going to get uh, marked up a little bit. But that gives me the indicator where I need to be. So this has a nice angle to it. It's got a nice uh, sharper edge. Not too sharp so it'll cut the metal, but sharp enough so you get a nice 90 there. And you can bring this up pretty nicely. Now you see what happens when you bring that up. There's too much material here. This is a uh, convex curve and when you have a convex curve you'll end up with too much material on, in the flange so then you have to shrink it out. So we go over to the shrinker and we'll shrink that out. So now when you use a shrinker, you don't want to go all the way in like that because what's happening here is this outer edge has to move in. It has to push into itself and it doesn't have to push into itself at all at the root of the bend. So it's just out there. It's always this triangle action like this. So if you go in uh, a quarter or at maximum half of the way, you can move that nicely and if you have a straight edge here you can we're just going to eyeball it so there's a a pretty nice little curve and and we've kept maintained the, the straight and the radius can be tightened up a little bit more but that's not bad the way it is and that's one way of doing it just with a pair of vice grips all right, now I'm going to cut that flange that we just made off right here, and I'm going to put a new line in here, kind of mimic parallel that line. I'll cut it again with the shears. That's a nice clean cut. And now, We'll move that line in again, five eighths of an inch. <coughs> now here's using the dolly only. hit this you want to hit at the root so you're going to have your hammer targeted to the root of that bend and you can do some shrinking on that flange as it comes up You can get a little gather like that, and that'll shrink right there. It's just the way you hit it. Now 
So it is tipping the edge just with the, the hammer and the dolly. And it does still have a little bit of a curve to it. And you can do this too, where you can drive it down like that. And that'll make a wave in the flange. Now that's pretty straight. And if you hold it down tight and you gather it up, you can actually do all the shrinking right here without having to go over to the shrinker. So there's uh, the vice grips and then the hammer and dolly method. We'll cut that off. We don't have to make it perfect. We're just showing the different, the whole spectrum of how to do this. Another nice curve. And then, well, we won't put the tape on this one. This one will we'll tip on the planishing hammer. We'll come over here to the planishing hammer. So in this case here, I put a magic marker line because this is going to uh, beat up on the tape. We got the planishing hammer set up. I got a black magic marker line, and I'm going to put some air on here. You see that's an effective way of tipping the edge also. Now what happened here was uh, it's actually stretching this edge a little bit too so it's going to need a little more shrinking but that's not a big deal. So that's another way that you can tip an edge. All, right, all these edges are, have been tipped now and this one was with the planishing hammer. It's a valid method. They all work good and it all, it all shows you that it's the techniques that are really important not so much the tools. Now I want to show you how the tipping wheel approaches this problem. So we've got this panel here, and we're just going to throw a flange on it. And we won't do the whole thing, but we'll do um, maybe this section here with a nice tight radius. This is a, a, convex, or a concave one, and here's a convex. So we're going to put a line with our tape. We're just going to eyeball this at about uh, 5 eighths, 3 quarters or so. I really like the blue vinyl tape because um, it allows you to really see really well the line. Now there's one other method, it's the Urco has a flanging tool, Urco flanging tool, very expensive and uh, there's quite a few people that have those. I really haven't used one, they're really fast. Um, there's a lot of tooling that goes with it. But it's another one of those tool solutions to a problem that, you know, it's a really nice tool but not everybody can afford to have one. And they do take up space so there's other ways of doing it as I showed you. All right, so now we're going to see what the tipping wheel will do, doing the same operation. And all of these things are all about levers and fulcrum. So this is the fulcrum right here. We're going to be bending against that fulcrum, and this is the lever. And uh, this is a modified English wheel that I used to make these years ago. So now i got a light here. I can see what I'm doing. It's nice and slow and super accurate. So that's what I like about it. I don't like motors on my stuff because it's too fast and you lose control with it. This here you have instant reverse if you want to reverse. So I'm right on the line. With the lower wheel is just an industrial material handling wheel. It's a urethane I believe um, and then the top wheel I used to buy these uh, metal slitters that have uh, really sharp edges and I just put them in a lathe and uh, you could put it on a drill press for that matter if you didn't have a lathe and just round the edges a little bit and that uh, won't bite into the metal. So the purpose here is just to use that as a fulcrum not to dig in. 
So if you dig in, you're going to actually, um, especially on aluminum, you can bite through the aluminum. So I just want enough pressure on that so you get a good, nice, tight radius with it. And I'm going to go slow, just work my way around. I got good light on the subject. I got total control, and I'm lifting up with my left hand as I'm driving through here. Now you can, I suppose, get a motor on this and go really, really slow with some of those motors with variable speed control. I've had that on different ones and I didn't like it. I always like just the hand control. It gives me a lot more control, I believe. And then instantaneous reverse if I need it. Controlled reverse. So now the advantage of this, if you're doing it with the the body hammer and the dolly, you're making a lot of marks and stuff and with the vice grip it's biting on the edges of the tooling all the time. Here you can, it, it's, it's nice and graceful all the way through. You gotta just take your time and uh, the situation here is we're basically breaking the edge just like in a regular break. And once you've initiated that bend, it wants to bend there. So we're just going to come off the panel here. Now we've, we've only gone a few degrees up. Now what we got to do is loosen up, go back in, reset, reset our tension. And we don't reset the tension tighter this time at this phase of the, of the operation. Uh, uh, we just want to pinch the metal. That's all we're trying to do. Now we can lift it up and put a little more up action on your on your panel. That's the lever, and this is the fulcrum. Just about all sheet metal tools are nothing more than levers and fulcrums. They're just increasing your leverage to allow you to do what you want to do with the the metal. Like I said at, uh, at all my classes is that metal, sheet metal, is the exact same thing as clay. It's just stubborn clay. So you need these different tools to help you shape it and bend it and form it the way you want. You can see how nice that's coming up. Now, as that comes up, now you can see what's happening. Distortions are happening in the edges here. Um, this needs to shrink. All this will be, need to be shrunk, and this needs to be stretched. So, what you can do to maintain control over the panel, if you're trying to maintain, this is just a flat panel, but say it had a little bit of crown to it, like it was a door skin or something. Um, you, you're trying to maintain that line of the edge. In this case, the line is supposed to be straight and we're getting a little distortion. So we can probably go one more time and then it'll show you a little bit more what it actually looks like as it comes up. So loosen up again. Now if I was going all the way around, I wouldn't have to keep loosening and tightening because I would just be going up a few more degrees each time. But right now, we're going to go up a few more degrees here. So now we'll go over to the shrinker and we'll shrink that edge up a little and get it uh, set, settled down again. Uh, this is an Urco shrinker and uh, I have a set of jaws that I designed myself to fit into this Urco. It'll also fit into my shrinker. These jaws are really flat. I haven't relieved the edges of them. So it'll be difficult, I believe, to get in here around this corner because it doesn't have a curve to it. You want uh, some strong reliefs on your, on your shrink jaws in order to be able to get in there. So I do have a relief set for this one. This is my own 
Pro Shaper Shrinker here. And these are standard Urco dies, and I've, I've killed the edges on them here to allow you to get into those tighter spots, tighter radiuses. Let's see if this is set up right. Okay. Now this will actually pull the edge around too quite a bit. So you can you can shrink your way to to success here. Remember you're only going about no more than halfway. With the shrink of the edge will get beat up a little bit and then you'll have to clean it, and you'll have to planish it a little bit. But if this is going to be a wide edge or a hemmed flange for a door skin, it really doesn't matter. So say you had a door skin and you're trying to shrink an edge and you're over here. Well the user friendliness is not too good. So what I did is I made this and this gives it uh, a lot more utility. So I can be way out here. I designed this tool after having Urco for many years. Looking at the faults of the Urco and correcting the faults. He's got stipple dies in there. Stipple dies have an interface that's like sandpaper and it won't cause cracking. You get a nice, uh, like a sandpaper finish on it. Deckholds and Urcos have, and Marchants all have stipples. The uh, Lancaster style that this you can find a lot of uh, Chinese knockoffs like the Harbor Freight ones and stuff. They have what's called the, the file interface, which can cause a little bit of a cracking, especially in the stretching, with the stretching jaws in aluminum. And all these uh, operations, it's better to go a lot of little bumps like this than try to hit it really hard. Let the little stuff accumulate rather than trying to do it all in one go. So as you can see, that's coming around pretty good. Now we'll probably have to put another set of jaws in here to get this really tight one. The Urco does make what's called the duckbill jaws. There's a set of duckbill jaws and that allows you to, I think Marshawn has them too, that allows you to get into that tighter corner. But then again, you can do it with a dolly as I was showing before, you could actually shrink that edge with a dolly and a hammer. So that, that uh, was pretty good. I'll do the stretch jar on here. We'll change out and put the stretch jar in there. All right, so now I'm gonna do this uh, concave section, which has to be opposite of this, which is now a stretch instead of a shrink. So again, just take nice little bites on it here. Again, only halfway in or so. Sometimes you slip and you fall in all the way like that and uh, that'll cause a problem. So you've got to be very careful not to, to let it slip in. And you can overstretch. So now I got it going this way because when that comes up, it'll straighten out again. You can over shrink, make it go this way. So when it comes up, it straightens out again. So let's go back to the tipper. So this is a flat wheel. And generally I bring it up about 30 degrees or so with that flat wheel. Then what I'll do is I'll change that out. And then I made this one in the lathe with a 60 degree lathe bit. And that is not a 90 degree. What that does is gives you a little squeezing action as you're going through there. And that'll help you bring up to the 90. Now this is different when you're using this wheel you got to get it in there and then you crank down and every pass on this one you do add some extra downforce and that's what brings it up to the 90. Again now you have to use the leverage so we'll put a little good amount of downforce on it and we'll use the leverage maybe a little bit more.
Now instead of taking it out, I'm just going to reverse the process, but I'm going to increase the pressure. And this is 19 gauge uh, cold rolled steel. Measures about 38 thousandths. It's a little light on the 19 gauge. Usually it's about 39 or 40, but it's pretty, pretty stout stuff. And again, we're lifting up. The edge is getting really wonky here, which needs shrinking and stretching. And I show all of this at my coach building classes also. There's a lot of subtleties about it. So, that's as far as we're going to go with this one. Back that off. And now you see that the edge is walked out a bunch. So this needs to all be stretched, that needs to be, I mean shrunk, this needs to be stretched here. And you might even have to uh, clean it up a little bit with a hammer and dolly here and there. It can be all done with the hammer and dolly also. For instance here, you want to come up the, con the rest of it. You can do it with the, the tipping wheel too. Now you can see where that, that shrinking technique works really good. So now you, there's the, the gather right there. And that'll shrink up nice. You get another, another gal, gather going right there. You got another one here. So that again proves that um, if you know the techniques, you really don't need all the tools. Now you can see here we've got a little bit what I call the ski jump effect here. Now we want to bring that out. We need to put the dolly in onto here like this and then take a slapper, not a hammer. You could, I suppose you could use the hammer. And you want to get this back to a flat plane again. So you have total control. In order to do this real tight radius you'd need more of a rounder a shop dolly like that that would go in here and you take a couple of the gathers and shrink those down. And this you can put on uh, a hot piece of metal or a dolly like this and you can stretch right on that edge instead of using a stretch die and you'll straighten that out by stretching this out like this. Essentially it has to fan out like that. So that's tipping an edge. Uh, I want to show you how to do some decorative stuff on the tipping wheel, which is amazing. And it usually wows everybody at the coach building class. So first we have to do is change out this wheel again. So we'll make this a two-pod video because there's a lot more to show. I will show the wiring and how to uh, put radiuses, straight radiuses and curved radiuses in on panels in part two. Oh, this is pretty cool. Now what we have here again is a fulcrum and layer uh, a lever machine. So I'm going to go get a piece of metal now. So I'm just going to do a decorative uh, like a bead in here. Show you the potential of using this fulcrum effect here. So I have the top wheel down a little bit lower and what I'm going to be doing is pulling down on this a little bit and I'm driving through. And what's so nice about this is it'll create these really 
really super cool beads. And it's just so simple, it's ridiculous. No really expensive or special tooling. So there you have a, a beautiful transition. And now this would be a tough thing to do in say like a Pullmax where you have a non-parallel bead. So this has got a nice taper to it. So if you're making like a door skin or something and you're dropping the belt line bead down and the, the, the possibilities are just endless um, and you saw it, it only took a couple minutes to do it and you can deepen it a little bit if you want. Now if this is a panel that's going around the, on a curve, uh, wherever it's doing the curve you're going to have to pre-stretch it otherwise it's going to suck in on you and you won't get the same height. But this panel's flat so you get a, the same height. Now if you want to increase the height you just got to crank it more. Well that's it for tonight on part one of the tipping wheel. Uh, hopefully we'll get the part two up again this week and we can, we're going to continue with these videos. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. I, I generally answer all the comments and uh, visit our website ProShaper.com. Thank you. It's Ray Shaleen.